Hello, all my sister friends. Oh, that would help if I have a microphone here. Oh my gosh, there's an echo. Let me turn myself down on my laptop. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, a bunch of people in the house already. Thank you for Lori, Lynn, thank you for both being here and moderating. I appreciate it. Um, two Lynn's moderating, actually. Lynn with an E and Lynn without an E. Uh, Danny Mace Chill, good to see you again. Um, under my other account, so I can give you more likes. Oh, that's so sweet of you, Danny. Thank you. I love it. All right, I'm still hearing an echo over here. Let me just hit sound okay now that should be better all right hi Kathy I'm glad you didn't miss it it's good to see everybody hello mama squirrel glad to have you back Linda Kohler yes Nikki Noel ah la 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 Kathy your other screen name is Demented Biscuit I love that Demented Biscuit <laughs> All right. Very good. Very good. Mary is in the house too. Hi, Mary T. You need some mindless happy laughter. You know what? This book is guaranteed to give it. I have no idea what to expect. I haven't read this chapter, but I'm sure we will be laughing. All right. Veladia is here. Lovely. Good to see you. Ladybirds, hello. Beth Mortally, hello. Living an electric life. Oh, it's your first live. Glad you're here, living an electric life. Welcome. Aaliyah, hi. Good to see you, girlfriend, sister friend. All right. Yes, I am collaborating with James. You have got that right. Um, and Ian Howe. Let me know if I pronounced that correctly. I looked it up. Mm-hmm. After I thought of you after the live chat, I'm like, I know I'm pronouncing her name wrong because I kept seeing that I and thinking it was a lowercase l and that you were just being clever, but I don't think we have that kind of control. I think they automatically put first letter as a capital. So I'm like, well, how would you pronounce that? I saw somewhere it said Ian, so let me know if that's correct. All right, that's my shoe. Hello. All right. Lynn Skinner, can't wait to hear what James has to say about the book. Me too. And he started this past Sunday. So you can go back and watch his rewatch of um, um, this past Sunday night's live. And he did the prologue. And it was good. And I was fried because I came off of like four days in a row of six hours of sleep. And I'm a nine hour sleep <laughs> sleeper. So I was so fried and I like got into bed and I started it and then I jumped back and then I jumped ahead and I was like, I couldn't decide. Should I start at the beginning and then I'm like, oh, I, but I kind of want to catch up. And before I knew it, I was out. I had to watch the whole thing the next day. All right. Kathy, it's okay. You messed up Ian's name in the beginning. All right. James is a hoot. Yes. I'm glad you all like James. That's awesome. I do too. It's late for you. Yeah, I his do start later. You know what? I never even double checked the time on that. But doesn't he start at like nine or something like that? He is later than I am. And he goes three hours. So yeah, he's a night owl. You would like nine hours altogether. You're jealous, Kathy. Yeah, I well, I don't quite get nine hours because I have cats that wake me up frequently during the night. And then I also drink six to eight of these a day which keeps the kidney stones away. <laughs> Our family has a history of kidney stones, my brother, my mother, my father. And um, when I had three kidney stones in the course of two years, I decided I am going to drink so much liquid that they cannot materialize ever again. The only downside is I now have to get up two to three times a night because it just keeps catching up with you. But that's okay. I will do that the rest of my life to never have a kidney stone ever again. If anyone's ever had a kidney stone, you understand. It's like going in labor but not having the break between contractions. It's pretty bad. All right, he starts at 10. Oh, he starts at, yeah. 
Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, so that that does go late. Yeah. No wonder I fell asleep. 10 p.m. There you go. Yeah. I'm glad he starts at 10 p.m. because um, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, my daughter is um, having her white coat ceremony. She's in veterinary school and um, she completes her three years of study and officially becomes a doctor and, cl- and you know, m- clinicals throughout here. But then now she starts one 12 month period of time of just clinicals, 28 different rotations that are each two weeks long. Um, and she does that as a doctor. So next Sunday, I'll be driving a couple hours to get to her university for her white coat ceremony. And then I wanted to take her and her husband out to dinner afterwards. And so I can relax on the way back. I'll have my husband drive. He normally drives anyway. But I was a little concerned about making it back in time. I'm like, oh, I don't want to have to cut their dinner short or like take them to Chipotle or something just so I can get back home in time for the live. But if it's 10 that he starts, that's no problem. Uh, Beverly Newer, you love James too. He's great. Yeah, he's great. I guess I can start right now. Um, uh, You stop liquids three hours before going to sleep so you don't have to get up during the night. And my doctor told me that. And then I said to her, so would I be more likely to have a kidney stone if I do that or less likely? (laughs) She's like, okay, if that's your main goal, go ahead and drink all the way up until you go to bed. (laughs) I'm like, really? I I will get up two to three times a night to avoid a kidney stone again. Yes. Oh, you had a kidney stone while you were pregnant? God said, ah, and it's funny. And God laughed. It was probably right after you said, this pregnancy isn't so bad, huh? (laughs) And God's like, "Uh uh-huh, kidney stone, there you go. I said that um, my first daughter, um, their infant personalities were very similar to their overall personalities in life. It's amazing how innately um, different everyone is when, when they're born. And she was very quiet. She just looked around. She rarely fussed. She didn't even really fuss when she had a wet diaper. I would go, oh, it's been a few hours. I should probably change that thing. Um, She just, the only thing she cried about was going in the car. She would get car sick all the time. She just didn't like it. She never really got sick sick, thank goodness. But like she just hated being in the car. Maybe there's just the confinement. Maybe she has a little bit of a claustrophobia like I do. Um, At any rate, that's the only thing that ever made her cry. She didn't cry when she was hungry. I'd look at her and go, oh, I got to feed this kid. (laughs) She was such a good baby. And I thought, well, you know, I do have an undergrad and BS in education. And and I got my master's degree in speech language pathology. And of course, I've had all these language and child development classes and psychology classes. Of course, my kid's going to be great. And then God laughed and gave me my second child (laughs) who came out screaming so loud I thought that they could hear her three buildings down I'm like those are not the lungs of my child I and my other baby would be like <laughs> and then she was like I thought her head was going to spin around and oh so yeah God laughs he humbles us doesn't he he humbled me for sure all right car sick from new car smell mama squirrel my son is the same way when I when we get a new car and we we buy new cars and then we drive them for 10 to 15 years. It's just how we do it in our house. So we don't get them that often, but there were two times in his life that we got new cars and he just didn't like it. And I'm like, this is a smell of new car. You shall grow to appreciate this and love it someday. <laughs> what do you mean you don't like the smell of a new car? Come on, this is amazing. Soak it up. It's not going to last long. It'll be gone. All right. All right. Mary, your son, watch Johnny Carson. Mm-hmm. <sighs> really, the last great, great. Well, I shouldn't say that. I'm sure everyone has a different opinion, but the whole Carmack stuff and that. I mean, for the time. He was just kind of priceless. All right. 
please pray for my fur baby. He's 10. He was just diagnosed with diabetes. Mm, common in small dogs. He gets insulin injections twice per day now. Oh, I'm sorry, Danny. 10 years old. Well, mm, that's so hard. Oh, I hate it when pets get older. It's the worst. I will keep him in my prayers, Miss Danny. That cute little thing. All right, I'm going to show you some pictures. Just in... Steve, you had a kidney stone last night? But I, I'm still in bed, but I finally caught a live stream. Thumbs up, Steve. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> it took a kidney stone, but I finally got in on the Cloak of Charity Club. Oh, that's funny. All right, Cindy Moore's here. You made it. If I missed anyone, my apologies. Maybe I'll catch you as I, I glance back at this. Tina, hello. Um, yeah, I had the snarky person on my last thing go, oh, great. Another content creator saying hi to everybody for 15 minutes. Well, I want everyone to get here. All right. And it's only right because I'm thinking if I don't say hi to you and I don't acknowledge that there's people here, why do it live? I could just read the book. So anyway, it's my feeling. If that was you who said it, I apologize. <laughs> Maybe you didn't mean it snarky, but <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Kathy, that's so sweet of you. Okay. Oh, Lita Gonzalez. You are welcome. Uh, Leda or Lita? Is that long E or short E? Let me know. I have never seen that name before. Either way, it sounds pretty. All right. Here we go, people. What's wrong with welcoming people? Right, Lynn? Honestly. Hmm. If your dog acts drunk, give him a little caro syrup. Well, you know, you learn something new every day. <laughs> if he acts drunk, meaning like if his um, cerebellum is off, that like helps it or well, it wouldn't help the brain. I'm so curious now why you wrote that. Obviously, I'm missing some stuff in between here. <laughs> All right. Either way, it's Spanish. Well, I guessed on the Gonzales. <laughs> that we were going so either way okay which way do you prefer which is more authentic leader or letta let me know okay all right uh, leah will do thanks for the tip all right all right <laughs> kathy jenny i love how i should be clicking on these what am i doing there we go. Sorry, everybody. I'm reading them and not clicking them. I guess you could read them on the side on the review. Jenny, I love how you serve up Kotex all sweet. <laughs> not like me, a demented biscuit with <laughs> screaming at the screen while locks. <laughs> you are delusional. <sighs> oh, thank you. Thank you. The second way. Oh, shoot. What was the second way? Was that longy or shorty? Lita or Letta? Letta or Lita? Oh, people, which one did I say second? All right, just tell me long E or short E? Long E Lita or short E Letta? I'm going to get this right by the end of this book read with you all. Such a pretty name, though. Such a pretty name. All right, everyone say hi to each other. And Cindy has her cat has a cold. Everyone's animals are down, and so is Steve. We're having a rough day here, people. Let's do some laughing. All right, Mary, you have a friend with that name and it's Shorty, Letta. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'm gonna show some pictures just, oh, let me do it so I can see my screen here too. Just in case you haven't seen them. So these are the four wives. It doesn't say when, it just has their names. Like we wouldn't know who they are. <laughs> who would buy this book and not know who these people are? I feel like we could have come up with a better picture there or maybe just some background information on where they were or why. Okay. Now we're doing wedding photos. Got to pull it back so this light catches it. That's on my to-do list, people. 
I had the light on and my face was so dark. Even though I have a light up here, it's not as bright as the one behind me. So when I turn off the light in the room, then I kind of get like this washed out look. And um, probably see like every pore and wrinkle this way. So it's, you know, it's um fine. <laughs> not the most attractive, but it's fine. But that's my goal. I am this week going to go to Home Depot or Lowe's and I'm going to get a, a dimming light. So I can just have a little bit of light behind me to light up a little bit, but not have this be such a bright light here. Um, and then I'm going to YouTube video and figure out how to replace it. Okay. Everything's on YouTube. You can do everything on YouTube. All right. So this, oh, I've got to pull it back. That's Mary and Janelle in her dark blue dress for her wedding. And then Christine in the wedding dress that her mother made her that she did not like at all and felt ugly in. Poor thing. And then Robin in, I bet her multi-thousand dollar dress. <laughs> if I were a betting woman, that's what I would say, how much that cost. All right. I just want to say about the weddings that I understand that they did make more money um, by the time Robin came into the family. Okay. However, that being said, um, that doesn't mean you needed to spend more money on your wedding. You know, there's that common courtesy and respect for the other wives and what they had. I mean, could you have amped it up a little bit more than, you know, the cafeteria hall with just immediate family members? Yes, you could have had a little bit more. And of course, TLC was going to pitch some money in too. But I saw a YouTube video mm, a year or two ago that somebody made. Some snoop out there who is amazing went and looked up the price of all these little things that are in the wedding including the, like the butterflies the crystallized the real live butterflies that were like frozen in time and put into clips in their hair those are real butterflies that all those people had in their hair and apparently they're like outrageously expensive everybody had them all the girls had them anyway just like little things like that all those tiny little things that were unnecessary she could have gone to claire's and gotten a butterfly thing and it would have been fine i mean i had no idea that was her. in fact it bugs me that it's a real butterfly quite frankly anyway just because you can doesn't mean you should i hear that argument all the time well they had more money so she had a bigger wedding all right short e letta thank you letta I won't remember that now. Short E Letta. If I write it down, I'll remember it. I'm much more of a kinesthetic learner than I am a um, auditory one. Okay, there's a bunch of small pictures here. I don't know if anything is significant. I'll just hold it up. These are pictures of Cody when he was younger-ish, um, all the way up to Robin here. And as I say, mo my chat is blocking my screen again all right if you can see those robin this is christine just hers is pretty dark um there's mary and janelle whoops janelle and then the first three babies with cody all the babies in the bathtub i think mckelty said she remembered that one that's logan mariah madison aspen hunter mckelty and payden all in the tub. That's really cute. They look like they're having a good time. Do you remember those days when the kids were small and they'd all jump in the bathtub together and just play, 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 play for like an hour and a half? Um, I don't know what they're doing here. These pictures literally only say the name of the kids. There's absolutely no information. I should go back and look at uh, McKelty's Patreon for this chapter. Um, I don't really listen to it. I just look to see when she's done reading and then I click on it to see if there's something interesting that um, I think you guys would be interested in that I would make a video out of so because I don't want to get ahead but I think she talked about these pictures pretty sure she did oh I will be more prepared next week I'll go watch it again because I think I actually listened to it too but I may have been in passing because these are all a bunch of towels 
and it was either Christine or Mary who made these as like a Christmas gift for all the kids. They all had their own individual towels that were decorated. Yeah. All right. Any more? Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, Mary, Cody, and Mariah are in Times Square. And I wonder if that may have been when the show launched and they were doing interviews in New York, maybe. And then we have just a bunch of the kids standing in front of a train. Don't know why, because the editor did not think to put captions on any of the pictures besides listing who's in them. Um, we've seen this picture around. This was the day they took like a big family picture. Do you recognize those colors? The purple and yellow and that. I remember seeing a big, huge, full family photo dressed in that. So it must have been at the park. And then they took some individual ones there too. Um, Cody, Robin, her three original kids, and baby Solomon in this picture. And, um, okay, so this is really kind of the most interesting one. This is the camera crew. <laughs> of course, we don't have their names. Uh, but the camera crew is relaxing. Now, I don't know if that was one of the boys' rooms. I don't remember any of their rooms looking log cabin-y. So I'm really curious where they're relaxing. Or if they had a house nearby in Lehigh. Because this book came out, well... They moved to Vegas pretty soon. It could have been in Vegas. Um, putting a reindeer nose on for the camera is the caption here with Cody and what looks like uh, Ariella, I think. That'd be my guess. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's it. I mean, not Ariella. She's a little one. Aurora, the other A. <laughs> and then this is another cameraman who also looks like he's in that same log cabin-y house. It'd be so much more interesting if this book had background information about like where he stayed and where they stayed. Oh, here we go. That's the picture I'm referring to that we see often of the family back in the day before they had more recent ones. Okay. So it appears this book is broken into three sections and we're in section two, which is called sorority. Okay, let me do a little bit of housekeeping before I get going. Um, first of all, in your chats, um, it defaults to top chat meaning YouTube decides what it thinks you want to see. I get it with a regular video. If there's one um, comment somebody makes and a lot of people are liking it or a lot of people are commenting on it, so that becomes the top chat. And then, which is kind of stinks for the people at the bottom because often people don't even take the time to get all the way to the bottom. So those ones stay down there. Anyway, um, you can change it to live chat. And then you will chronologically be keeping up with what everybody's saying as we go along. So I'm going to try to remember to mention that every time we're here. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to close that out. Well, I did. So there you go. All right. I'm going to see if I can pull up your channel. I'm live. I'm oh, 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 oh. <laughs> did you hear me? <laughs> There's an echo. Okay. Um. Excellent. Okay. I just want to make sure I had all my settings set to go here. Okay. Echo, echo. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm live. I'm live. I'm live. 
All right, Mary T having a Diet Coke. We didn't share what we were drinking today. I'm on a new medication for three months that I'm not supposed to drink. So back to our water with artificial sweetener and a splash of dietary Pepsi inside. I might sip it more than usual though because in addition to that, it gives me dry mouth, which is great for people who need to drink more because it just is constantly making you want to drink. But I drink so much <laughs> to begin with. I don't need to be drinking anymore. Like, I don't need this dry mouth. <laughs> it's fine. Anything to make you help healthy, wealthy, and well. Okay, so this is chapter five. And my apologies for my video on Seeking Sister Wives. It said chapter four coming up. I'm living in the past. I totally forgot we did chapter four already. I completely, completely erased Robin from my memory. <laughs> Like the chapter didn't even exist. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay. So chapter five, sorority. Is sorority just mean like how the wives get along with each other? Is that what it's referring to? I don't understand what they mean by sorority. I have a different reference for sorority. Okay. Mary wrote this chapter. Back to the beginning. Like, I'm going to try to move it this way and see how this works. Maybe I'll get the light on it more since I don't have that other light on. Okay. Oh my goodness. Can you hear me? Is that better? Did you guys, I don't think I had my sound all the way up. You're all responding to me like you can hear me. Am I like screaming at you now? Did you have to turn your volume all the way up to hear me? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that, that looked like that's the mic. I sound fine. Do I sound any different? Did all of a sudden I get really loud? No? Well then what does this microphone adjustment button do? <laughs> I'm a little low to start technology. Okay. Great. Good. I'm glad you can hear me. Here we go. Mary. Like many women who choose plural marriage, I idealized the nature of sister wives. I was eager for my first sister wife to be my friend in addition to being married to my husband. I never wanted to be in a situation with a sister wife who didn't want to associate with the rest of the family. It, oh, isn't that ironic? <laughs> and yet she ended up best friends with Robin who didn't want to associate with the rest of the family. <laughs> All right. As I imagined, it would be the most natural thing in the world for my sister wives and me to form instantaneous friendships. See, now, I think that is a little naive of her because from what we read at the beginning of this, it seemed like Mary had a difficult time making friends. She didn't have a lot of friendships. And even when her and Cody got married and they did things as couples, she would just kind of stand by the side. And she was always sort of the wallflower and just sort of let Cody Cody be social. And uh, she wasn't. So I don't know why she instantly thought everyone was going to be friends. Hmm. You know. I'll wait. I'll wait. Let me pull this up. I think I had a couple other things to mention. And more people will come in. So we'll talk about James and all that when I take a break here. Okay. Paradoxically, I am reserved, but at times can be opinionated. This is true. Which makes me cautious about quickly forging close relationships with women. In forming friendships and relationships, I need to feel safety and trust with the other person before I can open up to a deep relationship. But when I do, I value them deeply and expect these friendships to last. When Cody and I entered into our first courtship with a young woman we'd been introduced to at a church gathering, I was so excited. She and I became close friends right away. This was unusual for me, and I immediately took it as a sign that Cody and I were destined to marry her. Oh, that sentence is so weird to me. Cody and I were destined to marry her. It's just, it's just a different way of thinking. Okay. Where was I? This girl and I loved hanging out together, 
and spent lots of time on our own without Cody. As I saw it, we were on our way to achieving the sister-wife ideal I'd always imagined. Though sometimes I got jealous of the afternoon she and Cody went off on their own to develop their relationship, I did my best to deal with those feelings maturely. I felt confident that the three of us had a wonderful future together and I was certain that while she would be a great wife to Cody, she would remain one of my best friends. This is why Mary's just... She just really ached for friends, didn't she? Like, ugh. Ah, uh, part of me feels for her because it didn't work out in the end. Like she just struggled making friendships. I don't know why. I mean, she had lots of siblings and I don't know why she really struggled to make friendships, but then she had this idea that, oh, okay, I'll get my friendships once... I get into a marriage and I have sister wives. They're going to be my best friends. And skip forward to now, she had one best friend who really betrayed her. And I don't, it'll be interesting to see in this next season if she realizes that. I would love for her to realize it. But as the end of season 18, she still was in the dark and defending Robin and thinking that she had her best interest. Mm. Okay, so I think we might be talking about the girl that Christine didn't like now, huh? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. My daughter said to me today when I said I, I read it live and I haven't read it ahead of time, she goes, don't you worry about like stumbling on words or something? And I go, I do read it slower because I'm trying to comprehend it. Like if I had read this before and I'm reading it again to you, I'd read it a lot faster. So I apologize if it feels like it's slow. When I listen to McKelty, she's just like, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, either she's not understanding what she's reading or she's read this before. <laughs> she said she hasn't read it before. Or maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just slow. I have to read it kind of at more of a casual, slow talking pace for me to really comprehend it. All right. <laughs> But things didn't work out. I was devastated when the courtship soured and she left. Mm, she left. Okay. Back then we were all so young. She was only 18 and Cody and I were in our first year of marriage. So we may have mistaken a crush for love. Nevertheless, I felt personally betrayed I had lost one of my closest friends, a woman I imagined would have been a perfect sister wife. Okay, this is where I get confused because we know that there was an 18-year-old whose parents wanted nothing to do with this and basically kind of intervened and said she wasn't going to marry Cody. Is that also the person that Christine didn't like or was there another youngin? Because the one that Christine didn't like, I think, in her chapter, didn't she say she was really young too and they were waiting for her to become of age? So were there two of them? Or did both the parents and Christine not want this girl to marry Cody? I don't know. Oh, I wish this girl would write a book. Now, if I had a dollar for every time I said I wish this person or that person or this producer or this PA would write a book or the next door neighbor, oh my goodness, there are people out there with so much information. All right, we're stuck learning from the filtered reality of the book and the show. All right. <laughs> We managed to put our failed courtship behind us. Cody and I were still the fun-loving, goofy, and wildly romantic couple we'd always been. But we felt that adding a wife to our family was something we needed to accomplish sooner rather than later in order to make good on our commitment to the principle of plural marriage. This was a promise we made to each other when we married. As much as we loved each other, and had a wonderful, stable relationship, we knew that plural marriage was our destiny. I'm not sure when it became apparent to me that Janelle wanted to join our family. Of course, since she had once been married to my brother, I had known her for several years. We had a cordial relationship. 
even after her divorce. I thought of her as a sister-in-law, and it never occurred to me that she would one day be a sister-wife. If Cody had feelings about Janelle that were anything other than platonic, he hadn't discussed them with me. I knew that he valued her intellect and her work ethic, and he had a deep respect for the way she conducted herself on an emotional level. I'm going to pause there for a second because I'm reading this and at the same time the other half of my brain is thinking about what I said before. (laughs) Because we women, we can multitask. Cody was married. Not married. I'm talking about. Cody was engaged to the girl that Christine didn't like. He broke it off the week of the wedding. That doesn't make it sound like it's this girl. It just said, I was devastated when the courtship soured and she left so i think they're two different people let me scroll back and see if any of you said anything i'm not sure if you gave your two cents in or this or not um the girl turned 18 and they set the wedding date she called it off one week before the wedding so this is the same person this is the same person okay all right so there's just no in this is overlapping with the Christine story of there was this girl that I didn't like at all. If she were to marry Cody, I was never going to marry him. And then the girl breaks it off a week before. And her parents weren't in favor of it either. And yet Cody makes it seem like it was all Christine's fault if you talk to him in season 18. His rewriting of history is very different. Okay. All right. We're on the same page here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lori. I was surprised when Janelle approached Cody and asked to come into our family, but not unpleasantly so. After all, she was close to my family already, and she was one of the people Cody and I associated with on a fairly regular basis, so it didn't seem too far of a stretch to imagine her as a permanent fixture in our lives. I have to admit, part of me was relieved that Cody and Janelle weren't a conventionally romantic couple. Well, that's mean. Boy, they really throw digs at each other in this book, don't they? For this book coming out, what, in like their third season? So they probably wrote it about the second season. They're pretty... I wonder if some of these came in afterwards because McKelty was saying that she had recently learned... She didn't think anybody read any other section, but then she recently learned that the moms did share that the different people did share ahead of time so they didn't know what was coming out and they actually um gave input to each other not that the wife had to take it or listen to it but like the other person you know would give like little corrections on specifics and that kind of stuff and maybe also say you would think they would say take it out because christine with cody and the whole Oh, t- Taco Gate, Nacho Gate, not Taco Gate. Um, I, I, there was absolutely no reason for him to put that in the book. Nobody knew about it, not even Christine. So it was just to be hurtful. Like there's digs thrown in this book at each other. Kind of interesting, especially for being so early on when they were still like portraying everything is great. Okay. Speaking of which, one more thing, sorry. In the Patreon with McKelty, she said that um, for years her mom would cry every time she heard the song Let It Go. That was like her her favorite movie, Frozen. And since she saw it at the movie theater, every time she saw it, because um, I can't think of the line right now, but like um, don't feel, conceal, you know, like that whole keep all your emotions inside was how she was raised. Put on a happy face, kind of like the shiny happy people. And um, don't let people really know what you're thinking or feeling. And uh, it was a release when she finally was able to let go of that. I wonder when that movie came out a while ago. I wonder if she had already started to let go or if it made her cry because she still hadn't let go. Don't know. Okay, I'll go on. I'm sorry. Sidestep. All right, so she said it didn't seem too far of a stretch to imagine her as a permanent fixture in their lives. 
I have to admit part, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> this was the mean line. I have to admit part of me was relieved that Cody and Janelle weren't a conventionally romantic couple. I didn't feel that Janelle's presence in our lives in any way threatened the love Cody and I shared. The bond was intellectual, which made it easier for me to accept Janelle. If they had been one of those gushy, lovey-dovey couples who melt at the sight of each other, if they had been the same kind of couple Cody and I were, I would have had a lot more trouble making peace with the idea of her as a sister wife. I mean, it's kind of mean, but then I guess Janelle kind of said the same thing too, didn't she? That it took time to fall in love. Christine said the same thing. It took time to fall in love with Cody. Or at least for him to fall in love with her. I immediately saw that Cody and I would have one type of relationship, the passionate, romantic one that we always had, while he and Janelle would, boy, she is doubling down. My gosh, we're still talking about this. Mary has issues. Instead of taking him out in therapy, she's taking him out in this book. My word. Okay, let's keep talking about it. I immediately saw that Cody and I would have one type of relationship, passionate, okay, he and Janelle would have another, something more cerebral. This seemed both totally acceptable to me and easier to handle as our first move into plural marriage. Okay, so now I'm dying to know after she realized that Robin was going to be this lovey-dovey, sweet, affectionate kind of wife that none of the other wives were, and they said partly they weren't out of respect for each other. She had to have hated Robin. Why does she act like she always likes her? I don't know. Although, I will say, just recently, I was looking back for something in one of the, I think it was the first season, and maybe even the first episode, but at least it was the first season. It may have, oh, it may have been like the interview, not talk back, but you know, the couch interviews they do at the end of the seasons, back when they used to do it with everybody together. I think that's what it was at the end of season one. And uh, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> so sorry. Too many side. Hi, I'm Cody Brown. Here I am. I pulled a Cody. I'm sorry. <laughs> guilty if it comes back i'll say later i remember so they're sitting on the couch doing that squirrel right joanna squirrel uh, uh, they're sitting on the couch doing that interview and mary was in tears she was saying how difficult it was to have robin in the family the robin that she picked to bring into the family some 13 years after they had had a new wife to upset the whole apple cart. So it was all her idea. And right at the beginning, season one, she's already in tears over the whole thing. So I, she was just messed up back then. She was so desperate to have a friend. As you can see here, she was just anticipating that these sister wives were going to be her besties. And Janelle's not going to be the bestie. Janelle was married to her brother. And I'm mean, she probably harbors resentment over the two of them breaking up. Although it did say in the book he left her after six months. But we, I don't know all the details. So she's probably not happy with Janelle. And then she comes in. Janelle the now is taking her husband. That's probably where a lot of these digs are coming from. I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, after all this, then they go 13 years of, there are times that Christine and Mary were friend-ish, and then many times where they weren't. And Janelle and Mary had a lot of friction before Christine even came into the marriage. So I would imagine that Christine and Janelle were, if there's going to be two that are closer, it would have been the two of them. Although Janelle was so busy working that she was happy. She didn't need the girlfriend thing that, that Mary needs. All right, so Robin was her answer for a while until she wasn't. Okay, my mind has about eight different tangents I want to go on, but I'm not going to. I'm going to focus, focusing, focusing. All right, where are we? Um, 
okay, so I'm going to read that again because I couldn't believe it. I immediately saw that Cody and I would have one type of relationship, the passionate, romantic one we'd always had, while he and Janelle would have another, something more cerebral. This seemed both totally acceptable to me and easier to handle as our first move into plural marriage. After nearly three years of monogamous marriage, I was ready for a sister wife, or so I thought. I was happy for Cody that he'd found someone to satisfy his intellectual curiosity, and I was happy for Janelle to have chosen, I just, I'm sorry, Cody, Cody with intellectual curiosity in the same sentence. (laughs) The comedy's starting already. All right, sorry. He found someone to satisfy his intellectual curiosity, and I was happy for Janelle to have chosen and to have been chosen by such a wonderful man after her failed relationship with my brother. (laughs) We have to throw that tag in at the very end. (laughs) I'm so happy for Janelle to have chosen and been chosen by such a wonderful man. Wait! After her failed relationship with my brother, (laughs) just to point out, she's a failure first. Okay, let's go on. One thing that was difficult was the timing of Cody and Janelle's wedding. They planned it to take place on my birthday, thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. (sighs) Could Cody be any more clueless? I didn't know it was her birthday. I didn't know birthdays were a big deal. I didn't know I had to plan a honeymoon. Looking back, I realize a lot of my issues with their marriage were really because I thought that they were being extremely insensitive. Oh, wow. A lot of my issues with their marriage were because... I thought that they were being extremely insensitive. All about the birthday. All about the wedding day. Did she not say, this is going to hurt me if you do this? No, of course she didn't. Because there was no communication. There's just a whole lot of, I'm not going to share any of my thoughts or feelings with you, but I'm going to harbor resentment for the next 20 years over this thing that happened. This is how the Browns operate. Crazy. Okay. Birthdays are important to me. (laughs) I felt like I was being completely overlooked. Even when they offered to celebrate their future anniversaries on a different day, it floored me that my husband would think this was a good idea. But it baffled me even more to know that a woman who was wanting to join our family would even think for a minute to do it on the birthday of a future sister wife. Fortunately, Cody's mom got involved and persuaded them to move the wedding to the day after my birthday. Oh, so they didn't get married on her birthday. Are you joking? What? Okay. They planned it to take place on my birthday. But they didn't. Mary never says a word. She doesn't speak up. She doesn't say, this is going to hurt me, or birthdays are important to me, exclamation point. Apparently didn't share that with them. I felt like I was being completely overlooked, even if they, so they talked about it because they offered to celebrate on a different day for their anniversaries. Still a little insensitive. You know, there's 365 days in a year. I'm sure they could have picked a different day to get married, especially since their weddings were very, very small. It's not like a wedding that we do these days. And it floored me and baffled me that a woman wanting to join this family would even, for a minute, think to do it on my birthday. Okay, now she's starting to look like she's pouting. At first, I thought it was insensitive of them. In this paragraph, I'm completely flipping now. And I'm like, they were just discussing it. It never happened. And yet, she says, I realize a lot of my issues with their marriage were really because I thought they were being extremely insensitive about something that never happened. Oh, wow. She can harbor a grudge. 
My goodness. Okay, fortunately, Cody's mom got involved, persuaded them to move it to the day after my birthday. While I wished them all the happiness in the world, I was not as prepared as I believed myself to be. Cody and Janelle's courtship was so quick that when their wedding day arrived, I was struck by the realization that I was going to be sharing my husband. Well, she kind of had three years to prepare for it, didn't she? I I shouldn't be struck by the realization. All right. No matter how much you are committed to the principle of plural marriage, the first time the reality hits you, it's a total shock. Okay, fair. I guys see that. For three years, Cody and I had been practically inseparable, and now there was going to be a new person in our midst permanently. Their ceremony was simple but touching. I was happy for both of them, but I couldn't deny my own sadness, especially at the prospect of them leaving for their honeymoon. Oh, fear not, sweetie. He planned off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I had a peek ahead because I was doing that video. It came up some other way, and so I needed to do a little bit of digging. So I do know what the honeymoons are. And if any of you watch that video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Comparing um, all the four wives' honeymoons. All right, after all, Cody and I had barely been apart since we were married. We spent every possible moment together. Now he was driving off for a week-long trip with another woman. No matter how hard I tried, it was difficult for me to come to terms with this. Just before Cody left for his honeymoon with Janelle, he pulled me aside and handed me some money. This is mad money, he said. Go out and play. Spend it on whatever you want and enjoy yourself. His gesture was so sweet and touching. It actually kind of is for Cody. He doesn't think of other people ever. Um, my plan was to hole up in a hotel room and gorge on television while I tried to make sense of my complicated feelings. Who was I now that I wasn't marrying Cody? When my mom and dad realized what I was intending to do, they insisted that I come stay at their house. I resisted at first. I couldn't imagine being around anyone and burdening them with my emotions. In the end, my parents prevailed. This is a time when you need people around you, my mother explained. She knew without without my telling her how much I was struggling inside. My parents were completely right. Instead of wallowing in a hotel by myself, I needed to be surrounded by family and friends. Despite my sadness, I managed to enjoy myself, which was really important because it made the week pass more quickly. Cody called me every day to check in and tell me that he loved me. There is no denying that Cody loved Mary. It is just oozing from this book, both from him and from her. These denials that he never loved any of them. He's just a liar. He's just a liar. I think he just wants Robin to feel more special. Because he called every day to check on him. And Robin had to force him to call his wives when they were on honeymoon for 11 days. And she says it's a week here, but I swear to God, it was less than that. We'll get to it when we get to the... Did we read about the honeymoons already? Now I'm confused. Did we read about the honeymoons? Or did I just read it myself when I was doing the research for that video? I can't remember. I remember that Stacy Mew agrees with me. I don't remember which comment, but we're on the same page, Stacy. You took your pink colored glasses, rose colored glasses off about this family. All you can see are their lies, manipulation, backstabbing, fantasy, including the wives. But I guess it's a culture. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right, Ian. Uh, and Kathy, you're right. Yeah. Janelle and Christine both admit he loved Mary. When they were married to him, he still was that... And we can see it all over 
in those early years, going back and watching some of that stuff, how tender and sweet and how much time, how we make sure, all the things he does for Robin now, he did for Mary back then. Yeah. 11 day honeymoon versus, now they say it's a week. That's really interesting. Now I'm completely losing my mind trying to remember if we were already discussed or if I read ahead. So we'll see. It may have been the one that didn't mention it, how many days it was. I thought they were all like around three days. Okay, anyway, I'll go on. Um, when Janelle entered the family, Cody and I were still very starry-eyed regarding the principle of plural marriage and marriage in general. So we had no idea how to prepare for the emotional and domestic reality of our situation. I guess we just assumed that after Cody and Janelle got married and went on their honeymoon, the three of us would live in one house as a big happy family, and everything would go back to normal. Neither Cody nor I anticipated the need to change our behavior when Janelle came into the house. Well, at least that's a good reflection on her part, that neither her or Cody realized they had to change their behavior. Poor Janelle. We didn't consider how he might have to balance the relationship he had with me with the one he was developing with Janelle. I never took the time to think about how I should open up my space, both physical and emotional, to accommodate a new wife. Well, I guess we could chalk that up to being naive, but I just think that's stupid and selfish, quite frankly. I think she did know she should be accommodating. I mean, kids learn that when they're young. Kids are in first grade and they bring a buddy over or a friend over. They have to share everything in their room. They have to make sure there's a place for them to sleep if it's a sleepover that's fair. Not like you get the floor, I'll take the bed. Like, oh, let's both sleep on the floor. You sleep on that side, I'll sleep over here. And they share their toys. And actually, I always taught my kids to be over generous when they had friends come over. Because you have access to all this stuff all the time. Your friend doesn't. So... When you have somebody new that comes over, you have to be gracious. You have to share. I don't, I don't know how Cody and Mary didn't know this. <laughs> no. They did. They need Mama Jenny to raise them. That's what they needed. They'd know better. Okay. All right. Where was I? I felt. As if I had, I felt as if I was welcoming to Janelle, but I didn't realize at the time how different our personalities could be. We all moved into a new house about the time of Janelle's wedding, so I didn't feel like it was my house, but our house. When we were deciding who would get what bedroom, I offered Janelle the master bedroom, thinking it might be something special to have as a newlywed. Well, that's nice. While I took the small bedroom at the back of the house, I didn't realize then that Janelle wasn't the type to speak up for what she needed. So I don't know whether this was something that was important to her or even appreciated. I assumed that Janelle would feel free to behave with Cody the same way that I was with him. And I didn't realize I needed to change my behavior sometimes as well. The biggest mistake we made when we married Janelle... <laughs> That just still sounds so crazy to me. When we married Janelle, was us all moving into a house together and not giving Janelle and me the space we needed to develop and nurture our own relationship with Cody. Hmm? <laughs> Wait. Greg and Janelle was not giving Janelle and me the space we needed to develop and nurture our own relationship with Cody. Oh, so like each of, well, Mary already had a relationship with Cody, so they didn't give enough space for Janelle. Is that what she means? I thought she was going to say enough space for us as sister wives to develop. That's why I kind of got confused. I'm like, why did we all of a sudden mention Cody? So I guess that was, that was kind of like a backhanded all throw myself on the sword comment, right? Instead of saying, I didn't give Janelle the time she needed to really develop a relationship with Cody, she said, 
uh, not giving Janelle and me the space we needed to develop in the same ha- wait we needed to develop and nurture our own relationships with Cody. She'd been married to Cody for three years already in a monogamous relationship. This is so interesting. <laughs> oh man. I just says everyone caught all these little backhanded comments and oh my goodness. Oh, Lynn Skinner, hello. You're a darling. Thank you for that super chat which is not appearing on the screen because I don't know why there we go oh look at that doggy that's so cute Lynn that's your doggy hmm okay all right Mm, I just look at some of the comments. <laughs> A lot of wetting the pencil, pencil sharpeners, being on your knees com- comments. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Love it. <sighs> uh, paper thin walls. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, this isn't really a house, is it? She's calling it a house, but isn't it a mobile home? I think it's a mobile home. So it's a home, but not a house. Do people call mobile homes houses? I never did in my life. And mobile homes have a lot thinner walls. I remember the paper thin walls because when Christine came into the relationship, she talked about the paper thin walls. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Kathy said the happy pills have kicked in. <laughs> Woohoo! Kathy, it was a mobile home. Yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Mobile home. Not the ideal situation. So the master in the front was Janelle's and she, I guess, didn't feel like she appreciated it because she didn't share that, I guess. Okay. All right, let me go on from her saying, we each needed more time to develop our relationship with Cody. Mm-hmm. Okay. Having us all in the same house brought Janelle face-to-face on a daily basis with the romantic relationship Cody and I had. We were too naive to hide our affection for each other from Janelle. No. And I'm afraid to say that she was confronted by it regularly, which I'm sure was both painful and awkward. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. This is hindsight, her trying to make it better because she knows Janelle's going to talk about it in her part of the book. Or maybe since they did go back and forth and share what they were writing, she saw that ja- I mean, I don't know. I haven't read the book. <laughs> Maybe Janelle doesn't mention it at all. But if she did mention it, I could see Mary going back and going, let me explain (laughs) my point of view. I was too naive. I didn't know. I didn't know being really affectionate with her husband (laughs) was going to bother her. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. And I blame Cody. He had to be man enough to realize this too. Hmm. He's just so selfish. Okay. At times, Cody and I would hold hands or hug each other in front of Janelle, leaving her in what was probably an uncomfortable situation. Oh, we did read about this, didn't we? We had mentioned before that she had gotten into the house and she felt like she was a stranger, that it was their home, even though, according to Mary, I wonder if she read what Janelle said. Because Janelle was very clear about saying, I felt like I was going into their home. But Mary makes it very clear here, this wasn't our home. We got a new place when Janelle came into the family. So it was all of our homes. But the way they acted was like it was their home, Mary and Cody's home, even though it was a newer place. Mm -hmm. and Janelle felt like the third wheel and Janelle mentioned that they would like sit next to each other and hold hands on the couch when they're watching TV together and then Janelle would be sitting somewhere else watching TV how awkward 
So there's the hand-holding part of it. I think this is her in response to reading what Janelle had wrote and her updating her chapter to explain herself or tried to. I might be wrong. I, it's just, it matches too well. Too convenient. Okay. Although Janelle is by no means as physically affectionate a person as I am, it was not healthy or fair for her to see the affection I shared with Cody. I am sure this led to hard feelings toward me. Living together from the start ultimately shortchanged the three relationships we were trying to develop and maintain. Another reason that Cody and Janelle had difficulties laying the foundation for their marriage during that first year was that they were essentially living under a veil of secrecy. Cody was simply unable to acknowledge Janelle as his wife outside of our church community. We were very quiet and private when it came to our family life, which I'm sure didn't help Janelle feel secure in her position in the family. When we went out together somewhere other than church associations, we always introduced Janelle as Cody's sister. (gasps) What? What? His sister? It couldn't be Mary's friend or a friend of the family. It had to be a sister. Ew. Janelle, man, she really took it, didn't she? All right. Uh, Kat said the Dargers showed affection. They did, didn't they? Mm Mm-hmm. And they talked about that in one of the episodes, how they're all, he's affectionate with all of them in front of all of them. Although that Durger guy seems like um, he spread it out pretty evenly. And I think he's so militant that he did. (laughs) Now that militant part of himself, I think would be annoying to live with and not the ideal situation for a husband, but he did run a well-oiled machine. Things were organized. Um, there wasn't the chaos that was the Brown family when trying to move from point A to point B. Um, and his wives all seemed happy and like they got along with each other and were very affectionate with him. Yeah. It seems odd, but. All right. So I guess Cody learned because he said that they never showed affection in front of anybody. Hmm. Jenny, do you remember how all of Cody's wives thought Joe was hot? Yes. Oh, that had to have driven him nuts. I love the fact. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when he watched that episode. Yeah, they did. I think Christine the most. She was like, hubba hubba. Yeah, Joe Darger. Wouldn't it have been great if one of them would have married into his family after they divorced Cody? (laughs) The great. I would have loved it. Okay. Just another little stick it to you, Cody. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let me just, before I continue on, just scroll real quick. Let's see what I missed. Um... Okay, I should read these out loud. Uh, they joked about the paper thin walls. I do remember that. Mm-hmm. Ew, my mind and eyes, Cody in action, and and you have to hear it. Oh yeah, that's pretty disgusting, isn't it? Perish the thought. And Christine would be quite vocal. <laughs> I get my drift. <laughs> Probably intentionally too. I bet Christine played it up. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Uh, Mary, I remember Dr. Phil saying no man ever takes money from women. And what and what did Cody do but take money and the land from women? Yeah, I just pray. Mama Squirrel, the trailer was shaking. Oh, 
that whole Coyote Pass situation. That just came up again just yesterday when McKelty was reading a chapter at the very end she, when she was doing some question and answer. I scrolled to listen to it, and one of the questions was, are they ever going to start building on Coyote Pass? And she said, great question. I keep asking over and over again, and I don't get an answer, which makes me think maybe not. They might just sell it. The dream has died. All right. Lori, Christine lived in a separate place when she and Mar- when she and Cody married. She wanted alone time with Cody. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that. But didn't Christine also talk about the paper thin walls? I could have sworn Christine made reference to it. I could be getting my sister wives mixed up. Mama J, hello. Yeah, Cody always refers to that house as whose house. His and Robin's house is whose house. All right, Lynn Vaughn, you're right. Good point. If you hadn't had a chance to like and subscribe, do so now. It costs you nothing, as I always say. Teresa, I lived in a mobile home for the first seven years of my marriage when the trailers are rocking, don't come a knocking. <laughs> Mary, you think Janelle sued Cody over the land? I mean, from your written words to God's ears. Oh, I would love it. And a lawsuit, too, that we could follow. Love it. Love it. Okay. All right. While I've stopped, let me just go over the notes I was going to go on. Okay. I mentioned before, if you're in the chat, it always defaults to top chat. Click on the little arrow and change it to live chat, and then it's chronological. Uh, what else did I write? Oh, feel free to agree or disagree with anybody in this chat, even with me, don't care, but be respectful and no personal digs against each other. Just don't be mean to each other. We can all have different thoughts and opinions. Don't care. Um, Sunday night, I will be live with James uh, from my take on reality. So those who you, who weren't in the chat here at the very beginning, he is starting to read the Sister Wives book. He did the prologue this last Sunday. So if you want to go back and watch it, you can. Um, and then I'll be live with him this Sunday night. And we're going to be discussing chapter one together. It should be a hoot. I'm really looking forward to it. He's a great guy. Fantastic channel. I followed him for a long time. So I'm honored uh, to be on his channel. And I should... I don't think I wrote it down here. Mm. Uh, no, I didn't. I could actually. I wanted to say there was um, somebody mentioned it in my um, comments under one of my videos. They were talking about, I just realized, I, I, I'm not out of the screen. I just got other things covering my screen here. Okay, I thought I was completely out of the view. Um, they had mentioned to me that, um, I'm going to look up who it is too, because I wanted to say thank you. At the time that I didn't, I didn't catch uh, James's live at that time, was that his live where he was really upset? with another content creator or the whole hoopla about that. It may have been that one because I remember seeing it. I just can't remember which one it was. Anyway, at the time, I, I didn't catch it live, whenever it was. And so um, I got an email from, I'm in the wrong one. My goodness, Jenny, get it together. What's with you, girl? Um, I got an email from Dawn. If you're here, Dawn, thank you. Dawn Chewett brought it to my attention that James had said that he was going to start the book reading and he knew some people were doing it already. He didn't want to step on anyone's toes. But if anybody wanted to come and collaborate at a time to let him know. And um, so I, I sent him an email. said, I, re- I do this on Thursday nights. It's a live read. If you want to do something different or tell me what your plans are, how are you planning on structuring it, what's it look like, but I'd be happy to come join in. And he's like, fantastic. And then we both 
chatted back and forth about how we share a lot of the same people. <laughs> I told him, I'm like, my people have been telling me to collaborate with you. And he said, my people have too. <laughs> so yes, it should be fun. It should be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, he's a hoot. And I'm going to be on my best behavior because you know I can keep talking and talking and talking and talking. His idea, his channel. I'm a guest host. I think it'll still stream on my channel too, though. I think he's sending me the link so that it'll also stream um, at the same time on Senior Perspective. Um, we'll see. I have never had a live guest host on my channel at all, so this is all new to me to go this way. So I told James, go ahead, take the wheel. <laughs> Tell me where to go, where to be, what to do, and I'm there. I am I am your wingman for the day, and it should be fun. So I am going to channel my best behavior and let him take the lead. All right. So is that all the notes that I had? Hold on before I go on. Um, no, there was one other thing. James can talk, Jenny. Yes, he can. That's why I'm going to be on my best behavior. <laughs> because between the two of us... Uh, we can't have this be a five-hour chat. There's no way. Uh, and it's his channel and his idea, so I am defaulting to him. Uh, Amanda's hilarious. Her roast vids make me crack. Oh, Joanna. Um, are you talking about uh, reality, Amanda? Cracks me up. Cracks me up. I used to... I followed her from when she first started. I saw like her first video come out and I just remember going, oh my gosh, this is hysterical. If you haven't subscribed to Reality Amanda, she's so funny. And she did stand-up comedy for a while too. Um, you can tell. she's And she's one of those people who's just a natural. So on my regular channel, just my own personal channel, not my work channels here, not my, my you know, sister wives channels, um, on my other channel, I used to respond to each one of her videos, and I would rank my favorite, <laughs> my favorite lines or comments that she made in the video. <laughs> uh, I only did it for about four or five videos, and then I started my own channel, and then I just didn't have the time to like. I, I still watch them all, but I didn't have the time to like go through and pick out exactly which were my favorite lines. And so she's she's great. I should say Amanda is a big part of the reason I might have my own channel actually, because I was just kind of so inspired, and then all of a sudden I thought, um, if I'm going to spend all this time watching this, and then I found Sarah, and then I found James, and a bunch of other ones. Some that I subscribed to for like a day and then unsubscribed <laughs> when I realized this just isn't my people. Okay, so I'm going to get back to reading because I think I covered, I still didn't cover everything. The other thing I wanted to mention is I have a second channel and my second channel is called Reality TV Breakdown. And I want everyone to go subscribe to it. If it's not your thing, that's okay. By you subscribing, it doesn't really benefit me in any way the way content creators make their money is when um, people watch your stuff and the advertisements go through so you know watching an advertisement all the way to the end and you know all that kind of stuff that's how content creators make their money so somebody can have a million subscribers but they have very little views um, or um, you know, they, they just don't let the commercials run through and they click out of them or whatever. And they could be making almost no money. So it was really not the subscriber count that matters. Now, the subscriber count, I guess, if you have that many people subscribed, there may be, you could argue that there it may pop up on their channel more often. So they might be more likely to click on it. But other than that, so I say this to say, I'm not trying to say, give me money, subscribe to my other channel. I'm saying it because... I went down a rabbit hole the other day, and not the rabbit hole channel, <laughs> although I watch her stuff too. Um, I went down my own rabbit hole the other day, and you know how things keep popping up on the side? I was going to sleep, and I didn't have my glasses on, and so I would just click on something to the side. I would kind of listen, kind of not listen, be in and out of sleep. And I, you start watching one thing, and it just starts populating the same kind of things. And these were all videos about content creators who had their channels suspended. And they were for crazy reasons. And some of them, they made no, there was no reason. There's actually somebody, I saw a video on um, um, 
yarning yarning for a smile i watched hers and subscribed to her channel afterwards um and she's just an enjoyable person to listen to she's a crafter so if you're crafting um she does uh crafting on her channel and she had a channel that was just taken down you know and then you have to go through the process of appealing and having them look at it that she eventually got it reinstated but that's a process and in the meantime it's not there and there's no way to communicate so by having reality TV breakdown, although that wasn't my original intent for having the channel, but now that I have the channel, <laughs> I went down that rabbit hole, I realized I need all of you to subscribe to it. I'd love for you to watch the stuff on it. And if you're into Sister Wives, you'll love the Seeking Sister Wife reviews. I know you will. You will. I promise you, you will. But even if you don't watch it, just subscribe so that you know what it is because you can't if all of a sudden my channel's gone and you can't find it because of some stupid thing or somebody reported you for something that you didn't do, that's a whole nother thing of content creators not liking other content creators. It's kind of like high school. It's crazy. But they'll report and then they don't find anything wrong and eventually get it back. But in the meantime, you've got no channel there and you're making no money. It's a really rude thing to do to people. Um, but at any rate... Um, if you go to look for me or you want any information, it's not going to be there. And then you can be like, oh, well, she always puts it in her description. I'll just go there to see what the other channel is. No description because there's no channel. <laughs> there's like absolutely no way. I do have an Instagram that I absolutely never use. I think I posted once or twice on it since I started it, which is Senior Perspective 123. So that I could use that, but I don't know how many of you would find me there because... I'm so lame about posting on there. I don't like really have anyone subscribe to it. So that would be a way of being in contact. Um, but other than that, really, the best way is the reality TV breakdown, which would also have access to my email address in there as well. And, you know, if there's any questions or whatnot. So anyway, all that. <laughs> A long story, long, not long story short, long story long. I wanted to give you the full information to let you know. Please go to Reality TV Breakdown and subscribe just so that we're still in connection with each other. God forbid something ridiculous happen. As I mean, the more of these videos you listen to, the more you think, oh, Lord, this is going to happen to me, isn't it? It just seems inevitable. These poor people. I'm just shocked by some of their stories. Okay, we're going back at it. Let me scroll down so I'm caught up in time to everybody else. Okay. Excellent. Mama Squirrel, okay, sub to your other channel. Look at that. Talk about following directions. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> All right, Laura, you love my nails. Thank you very much. They don't go with a whole lot. And they probably don't go. I have these like red things on my, but you know what? These days the kids are mixing all the colors. It's not like it was back in my day where things had to match. So I think today you can wear this color with red and black and, and it's okay. It was kind of, it was a fun color for me. I thought, why not? Spring is coming and I'm channeling it in. All right. I'm going to continue reading. I have to figure out where I was here. Um... Okay, so we were talking about how Janelle had to live in secrecy. And she just got finished saying that whenever they would go out in public, they would introduce Janelle, that's right, as Cody's sister. Not even her sister. I mean, that would almost make sense as a sister wife, too. Cody's sister. Puh. crazy okay I remember on more than one occasion that Cody Janelle and I had a conversation about how to explain who Janelle was Cody and I lived and worked in a small community in Wyoming when Janelle joined the family so it was Janelle whom we felt we need to explain Looking back, I realize it wasn't fair to Cody and Janelle's relationship to refer to her as his sister. Since Janelle's mom was married to Cody's dad, it seemed to be a reasonable explanation. And it always seemed as if Janelle was okay with this reference. 
I always felt a bit uncomfortable referring to her this way. But she and Cody seemed to be okay with it, so I played along. I believe it did a major disservice to Cody and Janelle's marriage. Yeah, you think? <sighs> That's insane. I can't believe that it wouldn't be Mary's sister. I just can't. I, I just don't. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. I feel like there's a whole lot of, and this is just my opinion. I just feel like Mary knew what she was doing all along. But now she's saying, ooh, in hindsight, I really shouldn't have done that. That wasn't fair to her. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. And that wasn't fair. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time she said already, oh, and that wasn't fair to her. And that wasn't fair to her. And we were affectionate. And that wasn't fair. And I didn't talk to her about this. And that wasn't fair. And then we sat on the couch together. And that wasn't fair. I called her Cody's sister. And that wasn't fair. Like, it's a lot that wasn't fair that you were a little uncomfortable about. But now in hindsight, you realize it wasn't fair. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't buy it. That's it. I think she knew and she just wanted to keep Cody as her marriage and Janelle as the sister wife that works. I don't even say the sister wife that cooks and cleans because she didn't do that. She was the worker. She was the one that brought in the money. Mm. All right. Uh, NT. Hello. Don't worry about being late. Join right in. Lots of chat happening here. After Cody married Janelle, I went through a sort of separation anxiety. I missed the privacy of our old situation. The luxury of making a romantic dinner for just Cody and myself whenever I wanted, or renting a good movie and curling up on the couch together. These are the th things you simply can't do when another wife enters the picture and is living in the same house. It can be perceived as preferential treatment, and that is just not okay in a plural marriage. This anxiety put a strain on Cody and my relationship and made me at times act unfairly to both him and Janelle. I have to admit, I didn't always handle the stress of the new situation as I should have. I didn't know how to hold back or temper my opinions. I am a very direct person, and when I have a strong opinion about something, I can be a, <laughs> I can be a little bit harsh, I thought. <laughs> Could have sworn Michael when I was looking out of the corner of my eye, I thought she was gonna say, I could be a little bitch. <laughs> That's not what it says. I can be a little bit harsh, is what it says. Since I see things in black and white, I have a bad habit of phrasing things in a way that can come across as aggressive. Janelle, on the other hand, is quite confrontational and seems to have a hard time being honest with herself or with others about her feelings. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I get the part that she has a hard time being honest with herself and others about her feelings. I could see that about Janelle, but Janelle, on the other hand, is quite, oh, non-confrontational. Sorry. You can tell I don't pre-read this. Okay, now it makes sense. Did I say confrontational or did I say non -con Anyway, she's non-confrontational. Okay. I tell Janelle that this is how it needs to be. And I didn't realize I was offering her no space to voice her own concerns. I didn't intend to be mean. I wasn't even aware that I was coming across that way. I was being honest with my thoughts and feelings and just assumed she would do the same. I remember having conversations with her many times concerning everything, from how the house should be decorated to how the finances should be handled. I would tell her how I thought the situation should be taken care of. And because I had that type of personality, I just assumed that she would voice her opinion as well. When I would find when I would find out later though through Cody that there was an issue or disagreement, I was so upset that she didn't tell me her thoughts or opinions while we were having the discussion. I felt as if she was lying to me, and I felt betrayed by this. I thought we were in this marriage together to have a close, if not completely open relationship and didn't understand why she wouldn't communicate honestly with me when that's what I was trying to do with her. 
I hadn't yet learned how to be softer in the delivery of my words and not so overbearing. So I guess this is all just reflective because this is really contradictory to what she said before. She explains how she was all lovey-dovey romantic with Cody and that she didn't give Janelle that time to develop her relationship and she was all affectionate with him in front of her. And then for her to say um, that she was surprised and saying, I thought we had a completely open relationship well, not really, because you didn't talk about this other stuff, so. Yeah, okay. I guess this is all just hindsight's 2020. Naturally, the tentative friendship I had with Janelle deteriorated even more in the months following her marriage to Cody. I had hoped that with her in the family, we would be able to work on improving our relationship. I wanted and almost expected to have a special sister-wife bond with Janelle. I realized early on, however, that wouldn't be the case. Janelle seemed very reserved toward me as far as becoming close friends. Well, that's because you're all lovey-dovey with her husband, of course. I mean, come on. (sighs) She's not going to be your bestie. She's going to be hurt. I felt that I had to accept that we wouldn't have the close sister-wife relationship that I had always hoped for. To make things worse, Cody had taken a job setting up new accounts for Schwann's frozen foods, which required him to be on the road for long stretches of time. This left Janelle and me at home with our growing list of complaints against each other. Since Cody was new to the principle and the practice of plural marriage, he had no idea how to negotiate between the two of us. I know he was aware of the tension between us and did his best to deal with it. But we all were going to have to sort out our new roles and learn how to live together and love one another. During the early years of our plural family, there were many emotions rolling around amongst us. Mostly, I feel safe to say between Janelle and me. In living plural marriage, you definitely have to go through a huge learning curve. Janelle and I had a lot of rough times in those early years. We both did and said things to each other that I am sure we would like to forget. There is a lot of past history things that I won't talk about in specifics in public out of respect for Janelle and my desire to protect her. Even now we still struggle with the residue of those early years. I truly hope that Janelle and I can work through some of those haunting issues of the past so they will stop reoccurring in our lives. Someday, when we're both ready, I hope it will happen. That's interesting. We both did and said things to each other that I'm sure we would like to forget. There is a lot of past history. I won't talk about in specifics in public out of respect for Janelle. That's another way of throwing her under the bus, isn't it? Saying she said something so horrible and I'm not going to tell you because you'll you'll think bad of her if you knew. So I'm just not going to say what it is. It could be the most minuscule thing, but by saying that, you think it's she did something really horrible. Hmm. A lot of passive aggressiveness in this family, isn't there? My goodness. All right. While Janelle, through no fault of her own, brought a level of tension to the house... This just has this way of throwing in introductions or putting a tag at the end of the sentence. It's just like a little dig. No fault of her own brought a level of tension to the house. She also brought her own strength to the marriage. Cody was busy with his job at Schwann's while I was engaged in my own job hunt. 
Janelle urged me to apply for the job as an engraver at a trophy company, a job I would hold for 10 years. Eventually, moments like that would help us appreciate what our relationship could be. I mean, that's something a neighbor would do. That's not like, I don't think you guys had much of a relationship. If You're hanging the hat on the fact that she tried to find you a job. Ooh, bright orange. I see bright orange. Thank you, Jenny, for giving a voice to so many of our thoughts. <laughs> you are welcome. Knit my bit. <laughs> and thank you so much for the generous super chat, too. I appreciate you. <laughs> That's awesome. Yarning for a smile is in the house. I referenced you earlier. You're going to have to go back and watch the live stream. I brought you up. All right. Just got done with my life, so you're on. All right, that's awesome. All right. Giving a voice to many of our thoughts. Yeah, I mean, it feels good. Honestly, knit my bit. It feels really good to know that once I started this channel, I didn't know if anybody was going to agree with me. I don't know how many people were screaming at their televisions. You know, like I watched a reality Amanda, and she's so funny and all of that. But in terms of just, this is insane. I just didn't know. I didn't know if there would be an audience for it. So I humbly appreciate all of you watching this channel and watching all of my content. I really do. Okay. Uh, where are we? Oh, we were talking about Janelle, how she brought tension to the house, but she found Mary a job. So it was all going to be okay. She realized what their relationship could be. <laughs> uh, my goodness. Well, Janelle, it wasn't Jan Janelle's job was like a headhunter, right? Wasn't she like at a placement agency? That was her job. She probably made money off of getting married that job. I think that I think that was her occupation, if I recall correctly. If that's what she's still doing here, I don't know. The, the moving between Utah and Wyoming, I can't keep track of. But I think think at this time she was still doing that okay do any of you know let me see uh not one of the brown adults can communicate at all preach mary you're right lori lori says i could not bring myself wait hold on <laughs> scrolling i could not bring myself to read this by myself thanks for holding my hand through this mess <laughs> this is my honor it is my honor <laughs> oh my goodness all right so mm, okay the most difficult emotional battle i would face during the first year after janelle joined our family was when she got pregnant cody and i had been married for three years and naturally we'd been trying to conceive but we'd had no success so when Janelle conceived before I did, I was pretty devastated, even though deep down I had expected it. I could immediately see how thrilled Cody was by Janelle's news. When I tried to be as happy as possible about the first child coming into the Brown family, I felt betrayed by my, by my own body. It had let me down. It made me feel like both a disappointment and a failure. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. So I turned inward and started to withdraw from Cody and Janelle. Oh, that, that had to have been hard. That had, that I can't even imagine. People who struggle with fertility issues, that have to be one of the roughest things to go through. I'm, I'm pretty fertile myrtle. I could get pregnant on birth control pills if I start thinking I want another child. <laughs> that happened, that was child number three. <laughs> So I can't even, I, but I remember before having any kids thinking, what if, what if I don't have any? What if, you know, am, am I going to adopt? What am I, yeah, I just remember going through all those thoughts in my mind. So I, my heart breaks for Mary in that way, because for three years to keep trying, 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 and then have another woman come and boom, have a baby that had to have been devastating for her. At the time of Janelle's pregnancy with her first child, Logan, Cody decided to pursue a courtship with Christine. We had all become friends soon after Cody and I got married. Somehow, in the back of my mind, this courtship had always seemed inevitable. Cody
Andy's courtship with Christine was much more difficult for me than his with Janelle had been. I never felt that Janelle threatened the overall happiness Cody and I shared. Cody and Janelle were friends, very close friends. I knew Cody loved Janelle, but it was a totally different way than he loved me. Around her, he never behaved in the silly romantic way he did with me. I found this reassuring. When Janelle came into our family, the day-to-day nature of my marriage with Cody changed, but our relationship stayed the same. Despite having added a second wife to our lives, I never felt that Cody loved me any less than the day we were married. With Christine, however, things were different. Christine was cute and energetic. She was young and girly and quite flirtatious. I could see that. (laughs) Um, I had always suspected that Cody was more than a little smitten with her. And when they began to court... I could immediately sense that Cody was not just smitten, but in love. Ha! What? You sense that he was in love with Christine? Okay. I gotta keep reading this. I have not read this book. (laughs) All I know is what they show me on TV. And then they do in interviews. This is interesting. Okay. The one that he was repulsed by and had no attraction to in his car with the whole nacho thing. She now felt that he was not just smitten, but in love. Okay. The two of them. Good night, Aaliyah. (laughs) I just caught that good night out of the corner of my eye. The two of them glowed around each other. They had fun with each other and they loved to goof off together. Oh, I can see that with Christine. Where Cody and Janelle's courtship had been less outwardly romantic, this new relationship was grounded in an undeniable emotional attraction. When Cody proposed to Christine, I suddenly felt as if I were less important to him than I had been before. I felt threatened by their relationship and the friendship they built over the first three years of my marriage to Cody. Although she was our mutual friend, I always knew that Cody was somewhat taken with Christine. He was grossed out by her in the car, according to him and his words. None of this makes sense. You cannot take these stories and line them side by side and have it make sense. They completely contradict each other. My goodness. Okay. Cody seemed so much more engaged with Christine than he had been with Janelle. I think that he had learned from the experience of bringing Janelle into the family how he needed to behave with Christine, how much more expressive and responsive he had to be to her needs and wants. He had gained knowledge from his relationship with Janelle and seemed much wiser when it came to courting Christine. Didn't they only court for like a few weeks? Wasn't it like just a month or something like that? I don't think they courted very long, to be honest with you. I really don't think they did. And yet he learned during this whole courtship how to behave? It just seems odd to me. It really does. Uh, Delta Dawn, hello. You made it to lie. Celebrating with my first super chat ever. That's awesome. And I'm honored that it's on my channel. Thank you very much, Delta Dawn. I appreciate you. Woo woo. All right. I'm having a hard time getting through this because it all seems like... I don't know. Maybe this is why nothing ever worked out between them. If they're all telling their own truths from their own perspectives, I mean, I don't even know how they made it as long as they did. They're all on completely different pages. Cody is claiming that he had a million mile stare on his wedding and a million mile stare on his honeymoon and he was not attracted. He didn't plan anything for her and she's saying, He's all in love with her and all gooey-eyed with her. 
<laughs> and expressive, and he learned that from Janelle. I just, Christine said that it really wasn't until after um, Aspen was born, right? Aspen was her first one? Yeah. Aspen was born that she felt like they're, they actually started to bond in that. I don't know. I just think that Christine was just faking it till you make it, and he kind of went along with it, and Mary was not used to faking it till you make it because uh, Janelle was so quiet. She didn't, I don't, well, she claimed Janelle had pro. I would love to see Janelle really in a fight. <laughs> I mean, we did see it with Cody. It was pretty awesome. But even in the fight with Cody, it just felt like it was like a pit bull against a little poodle, you know? She would like try to come back and he'd cut her off and he'd interrupt, pointing his finger at her. And she's just like on the couch going, no, you, you're the problem. I mean, it just, and he's over her and demanding and overbearing and cruel and vicious and swearing and you know it wasn't it wasn't a fair fight and that's the most fight I've ever seen out of Janelle so I would just love to see this fight that Mary talks about or is it her interpretation that it was a fight just that Janelle wasn't like a yes man maybe I don't know I don't know okay I'll keep reading how much more do we have here oh Mary likes to talk my goodness, we're not going to get this done by 9 o'clock. I might have to, oh, I wonder if we're going to finish Mary tonight. We may have to put a pause in it, and I might have to put the pedal to the metal next week. And be... Oh yeah, Janelle seems a lot shorter. Okay, let's see here. All right, we'll see how much I can get through. I don't want to keep you all too late. Okay. <laughs> I'll try to do a little less commentating next time. Can't help myself. Can't help myself. All right. Da, 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 da. Cody, she says, also seemed more devoted to the cause. At least that's how it appeared to me. It cemented my feelings of inadequacy in our relationship when Cody called me only once while he and Christine were away on their honeymoon. Well, it sounded like he wasn't having a great time on that honeymoon, nor was Christine. So I don't know if that is cementing it or if Cody's just becoming more aloof and just... It's, I feel like he's starting to become hands-off, and he's like, you women just figure it out because I can't, I don't know how to be the head of a family. All right. Okay. Um, I appreciate it, Jenny. Oh, you're welcome. I'm not sure what you appreciate, but I'm glad you appreciate it. Okay. And everyone is agreeing with Validia. Kathy, you watch James. Good, 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 good. I'll see you on Sunday night. Okay, I'm going to go on. Oh, before I do, let me recognize Miss Carol here. Oops, did I take it away? Let me put it back. Smidets, Smidets, Smidets. If it's pronounced Smidets, that sounds cute. <laughs> Carol, thank you very much for the super chat. And your first super chat. I have a lot of people who are doing their first super chats ever on my channel. I think that's pretty exciting. I really feel, I, I feel honored that you feel compelled to super chat on this channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Or super sticker. I never know what, what's a super chat and what's a super sticker. I'm still trying to figure those out. Mm, it's says super. <laughs> I think that's a chat. I think that's a chat. I think they're kind of the same, aren't they? <sighs> You're probably supposed to be asking me those questions. I'm supposed to be giving you the answers. Apologize for that, people. But I am grateful. Very, very grateful. Thank you, Carol. Where was I? 
Mm, okay. So we only call her once while they were on their honeymoon. Again, I think it was only three days. <laughs> Not that big a deal. And shocking that he called Janelle every day of his honeymoon with, I mean, he called Mary every day of his honeymoon when he was um, with Janelle. I, I find that interesting. When Christine came into the family, she chose to live in a different house rather than squeeze into the same house that Janelle and I had shared, as Lynn shared with us earlier. She wanted her own experience with Cody before joining the family experience, so she moved into a small cottage nearby. Even though this meant Cody would be spending several nights a week, spending several nights a week out of our house, it seemed like a healthier and more reasonable choice for everyone. Well, certainly, because your house was a mess. Although I had a hard time with Cody and Christine's courtship, I was surprised by how easily I became friends with Christine. Of course, this didn't happen overnight, but her fun and outgoing personality livened up the mood in our household. Eventually, Christine and I discovered that we shared the same predilection for silliness. Predilection. Am I pronouncing that correctly? I don't don't think I know that predilection. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Anyway, I'll go on. For silliness. And we almost always managed to embarrass Janelle with our antics. Although Christine and I had a much easier relationship than I had with Janelle, I couldn't help my disappointment when she too became pregnant. Nearly five years into my marriage with Cody, I was beginning to worry I'd never have a baby. When Christine was four months pregnant with her first child, Cody started urging me to take a pregnancy test. My period was a little late, but that was nothing out of the ordinary for me. Still, he wouldn't let the subject drop. Eventually, I agreed and took the test. I absolutely could not believe could not believe it when the little stripe on the stick told me that I was pregnant. I was certain the test had made a mistake, but it hadn't. I could barely contain my joy. The next morning, Janelle and I drove to Christine's house to pick her and Cody up for church. I was struggling to hide my excitement. I couldn't wait to share my news with Cody, but I, I, but I had to. <laughs> I wanted to tell him about our baby privately, not blurted out in front of everyone in the car. Sometime in the middle of church, Cody remembered the pregnancy test. He got my attention and shot a knowing glance down at my stomach. In the middle of church? <laughs> For real? <laughs> right? <laughs> real spiritual guy this Cody is. At first I tried to ignore him, but he kept looking at my belly. Finally I just nodded. The most enormous smile I'd ever seen burst into Cody's face. Onto Cody's face. And his eyes welled up with tears of joy. Cody and I were beside ourselves with happiness. The very thing we'd been hoping for since we got married had finally happened. We were going to have our first child. The only thing that tempered my joy a little was knowing that Christine was going to have a hard time with my pregnancy. She was new to the family and four months pregnant with her first child, and now here I was pregnant with a five, after a five-year struggle. I was carrying a miracle baby. I was afraid that a lot of the focus would shift from her to me. While I didn't blame her for being slightly resentful that I stole her thunder, I tried not to dwell on it. I was so excited and happy that I'd finally gotten what I always wanted. Hmm. I wonder if Christine really was upset about that. I wouldn't think she would be. Because obviously they're not using any birth control. They're just trying to have as many kids as possible. After Mariah was born, I was certain that I was going to have more children. My entire life, I'd always wanted eight kids. In fact, when Cody and I started dating, this was something we talked about on a regular basis. Once I had Mariah, my body didn't want to give me any more children. Cody and I tried everything to help me conceive, from medical doctors to holistic healers, but nothing worked. The most difficult thing for me was knowing that the fertility problem lay with me, not with Cody. Since Janelle and Christine got pregnant so often and so easily, it was clear that Cody had no problem fathering children. I struggled to come to terms with the fact that I was somehow defective. 
Oh, no, you're not. You got a beautiful baby. Cody never once made me feel bad for the fact that I wasn't able to get pregnant again. Yet, I sometimes couldn't help but feel that my sister wives used their pregnancies to validate their marriages to Cody in a way that I couldn't. No, that's all in your head, Mary. That's in your head. Mm -mm. I was just going to give Cody a compliment here. I guess I still will. He never made her feel bad that she... I could see him. I could see that in him. Like, this is part of our philosophy and mantra and our belief at our church that we want to have as many children as possible and you're taking up a space as a wife <laughs> and only having one child like I could see him making it difficult for her I don't know what their philosophy on adoption is in this faith that'd be interesting to know anyway so since I give Cody one compliment a year <laughs> here it is <laughs> I think that was that was good very good of him to never in all those years make her feel bad or guilty about what her body simply couldn't do all right but i do not agree mary that the other women were using their pregnancies to validate their marriages in a way that she couldn't i think that was in her head because she so badly wanted something else that she was reading into it all right i know they never intentionally flaunted their fertility but because I struggled so much with my infertility issues, I often wondered what place I had in the family. Yeah, so okay, she just kind of basically said it. When Mariah was 12 years old, oh, we're jumping ahead. <laughs> I pretty much given up all hope of having another child. Then completely out of the blue, I got pregnant again. My joy, however, was short-lived and I lost the baby after only a couple of months. I was devastated. My body simply didn't want to have any more children. I was blessed with one, and I would have to be content with that. There would be no more babies in my future. During the 12 years between Mariah's birth and my second unsuccessful pregnancy, our family went through a lot of growing pains. I know that Janelle struggled to find her path in our midst, and it was always on the lookout for a way to assert her own identity in such a large family with three wives and 12 children. We had to learn to work together and to make decisions in a way that put family first. The root of many of our problems stemmed from two issues, our living situation and Cody's job. Cody was often employed in positions that required him to travel a lot, which would essentially leave the three wives behind functioning as single mothers. I'm switching because I'm leaning on my elbow and my arm's becoming numb. <laughs> Circulation issues lately, Jenny. <laughs> During a period when he was on the road a lot, Janelle moved into her own house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Although she and I had been struggling under one roof for nearly 10 years, the separation of our children was difficult. Okay, but why? Why did she move? Why did she move? Did I miss that? Was I reading words as I was switching elbows and not paying attention? Um, no, I didn't say it. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say why. Okay, let's keep reading. Maybe it'll say why. For the most part, we hid our lifestyle from the public. Yet, there were people who were aware that we were polygamous, a polygamous family. Some of these people would refer to Cody and his families. This always rubbed me the wrong way. Despite our differences, we were one big family who happened to be divided into three different houses. Our separation was causing an identity crisis. Does Janelle address why she moved out of the house? Was it just the two of them weren't getting along? I mean, they probably ran out of room. Because if it was a two-bedroom trailer... And then they now had probably by now at least three kids. They probably just needed more space. Okay. I'm just hypothesizing since they're not giving any details here. <laughs> All right. Uh, how can you be one unit if you're living apart? How can Cody be the best dad possible if he isn't present for all of his children all the time? During this time, Janelle and I both had jobs while Christine took care of the majority of the daycare and homeschooling. Eventually, Cody found a job in Utah that didn't require any travel. 
This meant that he would be present in our children's lives on a much more regular basis. While this was a major and important development in our lives, what really changed our situation and brought us together as a family was when we found a house in which our entire family could live together under one roof. The house had formerly belonged to a polygamous family. It was a large home divided into three separate yet attached apartments one for each wife. This was the perfect solution to many of our struggles. It joined us into one unshakable family. The big house allowed us to forge and cement our identity as a family. This house allowed Cody to be home with his kids every night. He would be able to see all his children equally. In other words, even if Cody... Okay, I'm sorry. Again, My mind is thinking about something as I'm reading this at the same time. I just remembered. I had heard that Janelle was on one of her breaks from Cody at the time that he found that house in Lehigh and really wooed her back because her money is what was needed um, to buy that home. So she mentions it very passively and calmly that Janelle just got a house. (laughs) But... I think that was Janelle kind of leaving the relationship and then him eventually bringing her back. Like, here's this grand house and you get the whole top and bottom floor. Come on back with your money too. And and the kids, of course. All right. Um, while this was a major and important development in our lives, what really changed our situation and brought us together as a family was when we, okay, I read that. Um, around this time, I really started coming to terms with the fact that there were no more biological kids in my future. However, now that we were living in one house, I was able to come to a deeper appreciation of the blessings that plural marriage has provided me. While I cannot have any more children of my own, I have been able, through my sister wives, to give Mariah many brothers and sisters. She has her siblings her age, peers with whom she can share all the experiences of growing up, as well as siblings who are younger and look up to her. If I hadn't chosen polygamy, If I hadn't been called to it and listened to that call, I would never have achieved the large family I always dreamed of having. Plural marriage has blessed me with what my body denied me. I'm going to sneeze. Sorry. (coughs) Sorry, I didn't want to do that in the microphone. Okay. I'm still plugging along here, people. I know it's after nine. Are we still around? Yes, we still have lots of people here. Okay. Going to get as much of this chapter done as I possibly can. Okay. I like that we're in uh, Lehigh, Utah now, though, because now I start to feel like I can relate to the story since that's when it started on the Sister Wives show. All right. I have a wonderful relationship with all the kids in our family. That didn't age well. (laughs) Maybe she thought she did at the time. And maybe even at that time because we don't have details about exactly what happened between the kids and uh, Mary. Maybe at this time things were still good. Love you too, Mrs. Alicia. Okay. Bless you too, Kathy. Awesome. Does that mean you're all leaving? (laughs) Are you just being nice? (laughs) Okay, (laughs) keep reading. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Okay. Naturally, with so many children, I am closer to some than others. It's hard to describe my relationship to all the children who are not biologically mine. I have been an essential part of their upbringing in the same way that Janelle and Christine have been part of Mariah's. I may not be their biological mother, but I am a mother to them. 
Since I have more time on my hands and since my living area is always quite a bit more peaceful than others, I'm the mom the kids come to when they want a little quiet time away from their siblings. They call it Mary time. It's a wonderful feeling knowing there is a huge pack of children who love me and want to hang out and have fun with me. Yeah, that's probably filling that need for friendship and all that. I think that just it might also just be like her craving love. She probably would do really well in a brother husband situation. <laughs> okay, never watched that show. Never watched that show. Somehow it didn't interest me. When we moved into the big house in Utah, the one feature on the first season of Sister Wives, it was time to start working through a lot of my difficulties with Janelle. We were both incredibly devoted to our family and our faith, and despite our differences, we are committed to creating the best, safest, warmest environment for our kids. Boy, this animosity between them has been forever and continues on because that whole conversation when they like tried to start to work through it, that was after being down in Vegas for a while. Huh. Jenny must have forgotten her sneeze. Oh, that's why you're blessing me. <laughs> Hold on, I, I hear a cat meowing outside the door. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, everyone's like, bless you. Take care. Bye. We're out of here. <laughs> I did forget I sneezed. <sighs> bless you for saying bless you. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yes, I hear you. Yes, I know. I'm here. It's oh, no, it's I know it's after nine. The biological clock on cats is amazing. <laughs> nine a.m., nine p.m. They know. I mean, she doesn't always eat at nine. On Mondays, I don't get home till after ten. Like I, it's this isn't like she's gonna die or anything. <laughs> Trust me. Okay. Often people ask me if I'd be friends with my sister wives if they weren't married to my husband. This is a difficult question, but it goes a long way to understanding the nature of sister wives. Janelle and I are very different people. We see the world opposite ways and handle situations in entirely different manners. I'm sure if we weren't married to Cody, our friendship wouldn't have gone past basic cordiality. But since we share a husband, a lot of our differences are brought out into the open and confrontation is impossible to avoid. The nature of our singular relationship has forced us to confront those differences and examine the way we treat each other. Okay. That's fair. I'll give you that. While it's true that Janelle and I each chose to marry Cody, we weren't truly aware of the relationship and struggles that lay ahead. Because of our commitment to our family, we have to find a path down, down which we can travel together. One of the benefits of polygamy is that you grow in the religion. You are forced to examine yourself and your treatment of others, especially your sister wives, with whom you often have complicated relationships. Polygamists and polygamous families are often works of progress. Janelle and I have never had a close relationship. We don't gossip on the phone or grab lunch in our free time. I don't think that we will ever sit down and tell each other deep, dark secrets. But we are family, and for that reason, we love each other. I appreciate that. Although I do feel... <laughs> I don't want this to be a Mary bashing session. I don't. But like I, I do feel Mary as the first wife really was her responsibility to reach out and really forge that friendship. And she literally did the opposite and became very close with Cody and um, confrontational with uh, Janelle. I wonder if Janelle holds a grudge or if Mary just continued to sort of dismiss her because then she had a friendship with Christine. Hmm. Not sure. Okay. 
We've worked hard to develop a good and functional relationship because we've come to understand that this is what is best for the family. And when it comes to family, we share the same values. I feel like a lot of this is kind of redundant. Am I, do I feel like every sentence is saying the same thing that it said before? These are different sentences, people. We're just reiterating the same ideas with different words. We are not just good with each other's kids. We are absolutely, we absolutely love each one of them. We are devoted to our lifestyle and to the hard work we've discovered it takes to make it work. We've learned that there will always be bumps in the road, but the work is certainly worth it. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Or as James would say, well, what is it? Polygamy propaganda. There was another P. I think there's three P's. Anyway. It is polygamy propaganda. <laughs> On February 6, 2006, my younger sister, Teresa, mm, passed away after an 11-month bat- battle with colon cancer. This was, unbelievably dif- this was an, an unbelievably difficult experience for me, but it forced me to confront my own mortality. It made me realize that should something happen to me, that there would be two and now three women in Mariah's life who would raise her in precisely the way I would have wished. She would be loved and cared for by a stable and miraculous family. For me, there could be no greater blessing. Despite the fact that our living situation and Cody's work situation stabilized, I still felt the need to carve out my own space in the boisterous and often chaotic Brown family. Since I only have one child, I often felt slighted in family decisions. Although I voiced my opinions perhaps a little too aggressively, I still feel as if I wasn't being taken into consideration. (laughs) That's really funny. I voiced my opinions too aggressively, but they still weren't (laughs) listened. It's a funny sentence, Mary. It's easy to lose yourself in a big family. When we lived in Wyoming, when the kids were young, Christine and I homeschooled them and handled the household upkeep. Oh, that's the first I've ever heard of Mary house uh, homeschooling too. Hmm. While Janelle was working full time, Christine and I each worked part time so that at least one of us moms could be home with the kids all the time. When we moved back to, oh, so that's how Christine ended up with that night shift that she had to do. That really stinks. So she was cooking and cleaning, homeschooling the kids all day, and then she had to go to work and do the night shift at night because Mary would be gone during the... the yeah. Boy, she she drew the short stick. <laughs> she really did. Okay. When we moved back to Utah when Mariah was 10, I started working immediately while Christine took on the duty of the homemaker mom. I realized that while nothing trumps my commitment to the family, it's important to have things that I can do myself and for myself. Over time, my insecurity about having only one child grew. As Mariah got older and was more independent, I began to wonder how important I was to the everyday goings-ons of our family. I began to wonder if it would even matter if I wasn't around. I never really considered leaving, but was anxious about my place and function in our daily lives. I felt insignificant to myself and definitely to Janelle and Christine. To me, it didn't seem as if they saw any point to my being in the family. I knew that I would have to make some changes if I were to regain my own identity and happiness. I had always wanted to go to college, but since Cody and I married so young, I didn't give myself this chance. However, I didn't want to start school unless I had a clear idea of what I wanted to do. My family often jokes about my sudden intuitive ideas that they call popcorn thoughts, ideas that pop into my head from out of nowhere. One morning, as I was getting ready for work, I had one of these so-called popcorn thoughts. I had the notion that I was going to work with at-risk youth. It completely surprised me, and I tried to push the thought aside. But as the days and weeks passed, and the thought, uh, the thought kept nagging me, I figured I needed to pay attention to it. Finally, I told Cody about it. At first, I don't think he understood how serious I was about it, and therefore he didn't seem very supportive of me. However, the idea didn't disappear. I began to realize I needed an outlet outside of the family. I really wanted to do something for myself, as well as something that would help others. 
I think the fact that I only had one child, which made me feel at times less significant than my sister wives, really propelled me to search for something that would fulfill me. When I enrolled in Utah Valley University and took classes in counseling, Cody realized how committed I was to this new career. Both he and my sister wives were very encouraging. Everyone helped out as I balanced the demands of my new course load against those of my job and my family. Eventually, I got a job working with the residential staff as a treatment at, at a treatment center for troubled teens. I was incredibly satisfied with my job. I was eager to get my degree and start working as a counselor myself. I think that due to the space that each of us wives have for ourselves, coupled with how easy it was to come together as a large family unit in our new home, things had stabilized in our household. We had all become used to one another's quirks and differences. We all had a maturity about us because of our age and the length of time we had together as a family raising our kids. Not all the relationships in the house were fully functional, but we had learned how to put aside minor disagreements for the greater good. I think the fact that Janelle and I were both happy in our professions and Christine seemed to be doing a great job at home really added to the general happy attitude at the home. After 16 years and 13 kids, Cody, Janelle, Christine, and I figured out who we were as a family and how to make things work. And then Robin made it all come crashing down. Mary, why'd you do that? Okay, or maybe Mary was a pawn. Maybe it was Cody all along. Or really Robin controlling the puppet strings. Okay. Although the Brown family was functioning, my relationship with Cody was floundering. After nearly 20 years of marriage, issues that we had left to simmer had begun to boil over. How are we doing on time? Okay, we'll be done by 9.30. Okay. I mean, we might, might not be done with the chapter, but... I won't go that much longer. Okay. Da, 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 da. Around the time that Cody and I were suffering through this low point in our marriage, we decided to take a drive together. It was a particularly good day for us as we had been working on improving our relationship and the communication between us. We were passing our friend Reba's house and we stopped to say hello. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. This is a story we heard before. Okay. You just happen to be taking a drive, according to her. And then they pass Reba's house. Okay. Reba. She-ra. <laughs> All right. A young woman, Reba's cousin, was outside loading her children into a van in order to drive. See, this is a different story than we had before. Because in Robin's story, she met Cody in church before and she knew he was around and then she decided to come back and visit Reba they, they were leaving a lot of stuff out of here mm-hmm there is a lot of holes in this story right now we happen to be passing by Reba's house who knew she had a cousin over to our surprise all right Reba's cousin was loading her children into a van in order to drive back home to southern Utah. We started chatting. I felt an immediate connection to her. After we drove away, I was instantly struck by one of my popcorn thoughts. This woman is someone who will be in our lives. Of course, that woman was Robin. I shared my thoughts with Cody that night, which was the first step on the path of welcoming her into our family. Until that time, I wasn't sure if Cody would ever marry again. If he did, I would have never imagined my being so closely involved from the start. We soon discovered that Robin was divorced, but believed in the principle of plural marriage. Cody and I began to talk about her between ourselves. It didn't seem necessary to bring up the subject of Robin to the rest of the family until it was more apparent that there might be a potential for courtship. So she became a little connection that Cody and I shared, a sweet, special bond in a time of turmoil between us. And there you have it. And maybe Cody manipulated all that too. Let's keep this between us. It's our little secret. <laughs> J 
just so that she would continue to make it happen between them. I know. I, I believe she was a pawn in all this. Maybe not, but she likes to have all those little secrets. Her and Cody have secrets that other people don't know. Like like the divorce. They're getting divorced. When? Tomorrow. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we forgot to tell you other wives. Okay. Since things were rocky between Cody and me, it was a little unusual to consider bringing a new wife into the picture, especially given that I never, ever thought that Robin would solve my problems with Cody. I just felt drawn to her in a way that satisfied me. I wanted her as a friend, and I had a clear vision of her in our lives. Janelle and Christine had not yet met her, so this little relationship between Cody, Robin, and me felt special. Mm -hmm. Okay. At first, the three of us... Ah, oh, now I'm feeling sorry for Mary. I tell you, I'm all over the place. <laughs> I am. I think she's being manipulated by Cody right here. At first, the three of us had a wonderful friendship... But when the time came for Robin to start exploring her relationship with Cody on a deeper and more personal level, things became difficult for me. Of course. They got you roped in to the point that you can't back up now. And now you're going to realize what you did. The masterminds, those two. I had been instrumental in bringing Robin and Cody together, and now I wasn't needed anymore. Since Robin lived so far away, Cody had had to spend so much more time away from the house in order to court her. At first, he'd take a wife and a couple of kids with him on these trips, as the whole family would need to get to know Robin and her children. Eventually, it was better for him to not include the wives, as he and Robin deserved and needed time alone to build their own relationship. How much time alone did Janelle get? Or even Christine? Yeah... It's like the rules all changed for Robin, didn't they? Robin's presence transforms from something that filled me with joy to something that made me extremely lonely, as well as feeling the love that Cody and I shared was once again being threatened. Yep. Cody and Robin started courting in the absolute low point of my marriage. Our 20-year anniversary was fast approaching, and I was learning that so much time together will either make you or break you. Cody and I have very different ways of communicating. He is happy to just stop talking about an issue and move on and never discuss it. And considering it dealt with, while I really need to discuss it and achieve some kind of closure on the subject. Because of our different communication styles, Cody and I found it easier to ignore our problems instead of addressing them. Things that might have been solved quickly suddenly ballooned. Over a 20-year marriage, with all the pressures of other wives and other kids, this led to a significant amount of misunderstanding and strife between us. When Cody and Robin began courting, I realized that the two of us needed to take steps to repair our own relationship because I felt insignificant and insecure in my relationship with Cody. I struggled with all the time that he needed to spend with Robin and her kids in southern Utah. Again, I turned inward and I began to wonder what benefit I was to this family. Cody and I were hanging by a thread and he was off courting someone else. Even though courting Robin had been partly my idea, the reality of the situation was very difficult for me. I liked Robin, and I felt a connection to her, and I wanted Cody to court her. But when it came down to it, and I was actually dealing with those emotions on top of the emotions I was already having in my struggling relationship with Cody, it became very difficult to deny the hurt. Cody and I had fallen into a vicious cycle with each other, dealing with hurt, anger, rejection, and sadness. It got to the point where we didn't really enjoy being around each other, and when we were together, we could barely say anything without setting the other off. We talked little and enjoyed each other's company even less. Hmm. I felt as if Cody was shutting me out of his life almost completely. 
Eventually, we had to look at each other deep and hard and decide what we really wanted. How, how, committed, how committed we were. Um, and were we willing to fight for each other and get back to once what we once had? Cody and I decided together that we needed to see a marriage counselor. We needed to feel solid in our relationship as he moved on with his courtship with Robin. I know Robin was also anxious for us to mend our marriage before she came into the family. It took a long time and a lot of hard sessions with us being absolutely open and honest with each other. It was probably one of the hardest things I'd ever done in my life. It was also the best thing I'd ever done. This counselor helped us work through our problems and unco- unco- uncover a common language with which to communicate. Cody learned to be more patient with me when I brought my problems to him. He learned to let me talk them out. I was able to confront my anger and start to understand that sometimes my aggressive attitude made it difficult for Cody to listen to me. It took a lot of hard work, but now Cody and I are at our absolute best. Oh my. No, you're not. You were at your absolute best those first three years of marriage, Mary. You're not at your absolute best right now. It's like it's like a little blip of of things are getting a little bit better. <laughs> but you're pretty much down here right now. And now I'm wondering if this is partly why the um the courtship was so long. You know, you keep hearing all these different reasons and rationale for the courtship that like, oh, the uh, he married the other ones too soon. He wasn't really sure. He needed to get to know her. She was far away. Blah blah blah. But here they're already courting in this and she said that they're starting and they were in counseling for a long time to work through it and they needed to work through it before robin came in the marriage so mary and robin mary and um cody's relationship might have been a big reason for the delay in the wedding which is another reason for cody to pretend like everything is going to be okay with her and for robin to really embrace her as a sister friend I mean, sister wife. <laughs> we're, we're sister friends. <laughs> yeah. They could still be playing her. We are still, or again, very much in love. Yeah, I don't know. We are getting closer to the end. It is a wonderful thing knowing that Cody is absolutely my soulmate. Our counselor had previously worked with plural families and was open and understanding about the joys and difficulties of our lifestyle. Meeting with this marriage counselor only strengthened my commitment to getting my own license so that I could use my experience in a polygamous family to help other polygamists who are struggling with themselves, their spouses, or their sister wives. I feel like this first counselor that they had was good. The one that they had in Utah. And then Nancy, (laughs) down in Vegas... (laughs) She's probably like serving cocktail drinks on the side <laughs> or is a cocktail waitress or a dancer and then she moonlights as a counselor. <laughs> she didn't seem that good. <laughs> anyway, this first one, he did seem like he, he, this first guy, he was a guy, wasn't, no, it was a lady. It was a lady with short, dark hair, right? Um, that I think was a little bit younger than Nancy. I don't remember. Let's see if they, you want to know the name. I don't know if she mentions the name in here, but they had a counselor who I think was actually good when they were in Utah. And then they had to find a new one when they got to, and and the first one was from, familiar with polygamous families. Nancy, not familiar with polygamous families. Not that you need to be, but it was just like another reason that she probably wasn't that great at counseling them because she didn't understand them. Although I feel like I could have counseled them better. (laughs) And I don't have a counseling degree than Nancy did. (laughs) Poor Nancy. All right. I hope she never sees this channel. I feel bad. All right. Um, When she decided to join our family, Robin took an active role in trying to forge a good relationship with me. She was patient with me and took the time to listen to me when I was struggling with my feelings and emotions. Yeah because she wanted to get in on the TLC money. Of course she did. She'll do anything. She began to see the same counselor that Cody and I did. Sometimes we did counseling as a group of three. What about the other wives? 
And sometimes Robin and I did our own couples counseling. What? In order to work through our issues before they were allowed to fester and blow up into large-scale disagreements and struggles. What about her doing it with Janelle? Why Robin? What? Okay. This is another Cody idea. (laughs) He's got Cody written all over it. He just wants Robin in that family. So he's like, you two go together. Get closer. Bond. Become closer sisters. It's good to like work things out before you even join the family. The heck with trying to work things out with the people that I've married to for 15 years. Meh. Just get along with this one. That's all. I I just need you to get along with this one, please. (laughs) I want Robin in our family. All right. All right. All right. Where were we? Since Cody and I had been married for so long and our relationship was in a different stage, added to the fact that we were in a really tough spot, it was easy for me to put the blame on Robin. Oh, that's the first time I heard that. She never said that on the show. She's blaming Robin. Even when she was crying in that end of the season one thing, she was like kind of taking full responsibility for the tears and saying how great Robin was. All right. In my head, I was sure that Cody wouldn't be treating me so unfairly if I, if it wasn't for her presence in our lives. Cody was my husband, so I couldn't blame him, and surely I, I couldn't be at fault. So in my mind, the obvious answer was Robin. Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> you got it right. I couldn't have been more wrong. Well, who told you that? Maybe I don't like this counselor. <laughs> All right. Robin and I needed to figure out how to have a healthy friendship outside of our marriage to Cody, and I had to learn not to blame Robin for my own struggles with Cody. I had to begin looking inward and admit my own shortcomings so I could improve myself. Oh, I don't like this. I don't like the direction this is going at all. No, not at all. Where are we? Okay. We're going to start here next week because I feel like we're going to need to discuss. <laughs> I am suddenly not liking the turn that this is taking. So these last four pages of the chapter, uh, well, last three pages, really. Um, we'll start here at the very end of Mary's and then do Janelle next week. Let me look at some of this uh, chat to catch up with y'all before I get going here. All right. And Kathy's going to bed. Good night, Kathy. Um... Cody and Robin's wedding was delayed until the show started. Uh, I know that it was a they, was it largely paid for by them. That's interesting. Mm. So you think that's one of the big factors and the reason he had to court her for so long to get the money for the wedding and the dress and the honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can see that. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, (laughs) no amount of therapy can help these people. (laughs) All right. Uh, oh, Pat. Was Pat the name? Was that the first counselor? Wait. Was Pat the name of the first counselor? Cody wanted to go back to Pat after him and Christine broke up. He did want to go back to a counselor. I do know that. Was it Pat? So it was Pat the first one? Interesting. Oh, and this is true, Mary. No counselor could help Cody. He's not going to take any criticism. Mm-mm. Yeah, and Robin's not going to let him go either. You're absolutely right. Yes. Oh, Patricia. Patricia. Pat. Okay. Patricia. Pat. I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Because you know me. If I put it in writing, it helps me remember it. So Pat or Patricia is that first counselor's name. 
that one was okay, wasn't it? I feel like that one was okay. I mean, Nancy was a dud. <laughs> Let's make a mobile with our bodies. Let's take rocks and stack them up what your relationship would look like. All right. Um, it just seemed like everything Nancy did would create friction and turmoil. And I know part of counseling is like digging stuff up and all that, but like in situations when it was supposed to be a little more lighthearted and a little more surface and a little more like, let's talk about getting together, family, bonding, it always kind of, especially for Christine. Christine was really triggered by Nancy. Uh in Utah. Okay. All right. Um, Robin's using Mary so she can turn Cody against you. Mm-hmm. Once she knows your weakness. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Betty B. Pop Psych said that narcissist. That who is a narcissist? Cody. I mean, and Robin. I could see that. Whoops. Uh, I'm a psychologist and I went to school with all sorts. Jenny, you're absolutely right to call out their therapist. Thank you very much, Knit My Bit. You make me feel good because I did not get a degree in psychology. One class, undergrad. <laughs> psychology of adolescence I took because it fit in my schedule. I wanted to work with younger kids, not adolescents, but you know. You do what you have to do to graduate on time. So psychology of adolescence I took. That's it. So I do not have the background in this. But it just does seem obvious that she wasn't that good. And that it just didn't seem to, they just never seemed to feel good about themselves afterwards. They didn't feel like they had a plan or steps or, you know, action steps or anything to what they're going to do before the next appointment or what they're going to do to help. They just seem to get angry. <laughs> It just, I don't know. Oh, all right. Mary was crying because she knew the lies and couldn't hold it all together. It's true. Can you say indoctrinated with a capital I? All right. They're all controlled by a cult. Yes. All right. Robin is a covert narcissist. Very good. Let's throw another adjective on there to describe that narcissist. I like that covert narcissist. I see that. Whereas Cody's an overt narcissist. I can see her being a covert narcissist. For sure. Hiding it all. And I don't know what's going on. What are you talking about? All right. See you all Sunday, I hope. Yes, yes, yes. All right. There's no cure or a medicine for narcissists. Yeah, I think it's just behavior therapy, right? If, and that's if they're open to it because they're narcissists. So you know, it seems like it's an uphill battle working with them. All right. Um, okay, so let me just remind you, based on what Stacy said here, Sunday night, I will be on my take on reality with J with James. <laughs> this isn't James. <laughs> with James discussing chapter one <laughs> of this book. Uh, so tune in. Um, he is creating the um, the thing for me now the little uh, thumbnail. And so I think we'll both be able to have it. So if you haven't subscribed to his channel and you don't know how to get to it, I think you can be able to click on it through my channel. But if you haven't subscribed to your channel, what's wrong with you? My Take on Reality is a great channel. And James is, is the one who does it all. And he does a lot of um, Sister Wives. A lot of Sister Wives stuff. So as we all do. We love Sister Wives, don't we? Love to hate. Love to hate. 
That's another good channel. I like that one too. Love to hate channel. Okay. Um, good night to you all. Mwah. Thank you for coming and being here on my live chat. I appreciate it. I really look forward to going back and reading through all this chat. Remember that if you are watching this recorded and it is within a 24 hour period of time, you may not see the chat show up yet because YouTube makes it go through a filter of a bunch of stuff. And it says it takes 24 hours. I've noticed it kind of gets posted before 24 hours, but it is it does take a long time and a while. So if you're wondering where the chat is, it just may not be there yet. And you might want to come back or just watch me without the chat. <laughs> And then come back and watch it again. And then you can read the chat the second time through. Because the chat is amazing. Everybody in the chat makes me laugh and smile. All right. You are all welcome. You're welcome. Let me see if I can write in here and say good night, sister, friends. All right. I'm going to log off now. I will see you all on Sunday night. If I can get my stream to stop here. All right. Bye.